We had one this morning. So that is yeah. who is speaking? The person who said they had one this morning. Who is speaking? Great. Please. Margaret, so how was it? That was good. We were able to solve questions. I mean, we got. It was good. She helped us. Okay. So, so, so you picked some questions, right? Solved said to the judge to. To clear. We solved. Yeah. Yeah, the questions, some of the questions in transit. Okay, good. So you did some quantitative ones. You did yes. questions that involved um, you doing some quantitative, stick, uh, calculating things. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, okay. We and did. You do... we, yeah, we did CIP. We used the newsletter to find most of living. We did nominal cost of baskets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. We've not treated inflation, but it's good. It's good you are, you are doing that. Yes, we did it. Yeah. yeah, that's very good. Okay. So, so please, guys, take the areas um, seriously. I, I, I've, I've, I've seen one of your colleagues brought me the first question, and I've looked at it. And the questions are pretty standard and... They are not difficult, but if you don't have first hand experience on how to answer them, I mean, it could be tricky, all right? It could be tricky in the exam. So, for instance, there was one that says that in ordinary language, distinguish between the following concepts, all right? Things like narrow money, broad money, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, all of those stuff are there, okay? And if, if you don't know first hand what Really, the examiner is looking for you. You can write and write and write. Okay, so so I urge all of you to take the tutorial seriously. All right, take the tutorial seriously so that. for you to all those questions. Okay. Right. okay. So now let me try and put some sanity here, and then go straight to what we want to do today. Today, we want to look at the ISLM model, all right? We want to look at the ISLM model. So more or less, what you are trying to do is, you know, we did fiscal policy, all right? We did fiscal policy. We wanted to look at how GNT is altered to affect economic variables. And we also looked, we also did monetary policy. We want to see how money supply affects real issues. Okay, so now the question is, what we are going to do today, Pretty, is to put to put the, we are going to combine two markets, the goods market and the money market. We are going to combine the two. So there's one particular curve called the IS curve that interprets or summarizes what happens in the goods market. And then this is called an LM curve, okay? Okay, liquidity preference curve, okay? That one also helps us to know what happens in the money market, and we'll bring the two together. The, the, the trick about this particular topic is that um, you need to be careful how you do your analysis. Otherwise, in your mind, you may think you are right, but your answer is really, really wrong. All right? It's really, really, really wrong. So, so what I want you to pay attention in this, this particular class is to know the roots that we use to do the interpretation. So okay, I'll, I'll take my time and explain some of these things to you so that, I mean, it becomes clear to you. All right, so this is not a difficult topic. See, that's what the analysis you are doing at the end of the day is not right, see? All right, so 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 um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and move as slow as I can, um, and but, We'll finish, we'll definitely finish the seven slides so that I have it, we'll finish it. All right, so so please um, 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 break, stop me at any point in time, ask any question you want to ask, but pay attention, especially for those that have not read economics before, please pay attention, all right? Pay attention very, because this is probably one of the first times you are going to be hearing this thing about ISLM's attention and ask very good questions, so then we should be able to address you. So today, this is what we're doing. We're looking at the IS curve. As I said earlier on IS, we are referring to equilibrium in the goods market. 
that is the IS curve. So what is an IS curve? How do we derive an IS curve, okay? But then there's the LM curve, which is money market equilibrium, equilibrium in the money market. What is this LM curve? How do we derive it? Then we'll go into policy analysis issues with the IS LM curve, all right? Okay, we'll use the framework to do some policy analysis. So let's start straight with this thing called an IS, an IS curve, okay? So don't forget, the IS is simply investment and savings, okay? So an investment saving curve denotes equilibria in the goods market. So when we say equilibria in the goods market, you'll see very shortly why it is called equilibria in the good markets. It's simply because points on every point on an IS curve denote different rate and income that constitutes an equilibrium in the goods market. Okay. So the goods market, we are talking about the goods for um, the market for goods and services. So if we take a simple Keynesian system where y equals AD, all right, we already know the factors that go into the determination of what? Of the AD. Okay. So in a closed economy, the equilibrium can be, condition can be written. We will come there, we will try and reduce this equilibrium condition that we know. This y equals C plus I plus G. That's, it's, it's a closed economy, so not, no net exports, okay? So C plus I will reduce this uh, equilibrium condition into this thing called an equality of savings and what? Desires, desired investments, okay? And it's very simple. Assuming the equilibrium holds, now if Y equals AD, you know what AD is? AD is C plus I plus G. Now I, I am C plus I plus G. I move this C and this G to the left-hand side. This Y minus C minus G is supposed to be equal to what? National savings. And for you to know that it is national savings, just deduct tax, okay? Plus add, add tax and subtract tax. So more or less, you've not done anything to the equation. Then you will see that Y minus C will give you what? Domestic and um, private savings. Y minus C will give you private savings. G minus T to give you what national savings. So if you put the two to M, um, it will give you public savings. Public savings. If you put the two together, then it gives you what national savings. All right. So in, in, in effect, what we've done is to reduce this equilibrium condition into what S equals I investment equals savings. Okay. So that's just equilibrium the goods market. So equilibrium the goods market can be written in two forms. Either Y equals A D or I equals S, investment equals savings. I hope it is, it, it, it's, it's not too difficult to see how you can convert this particular equilibrium equation equals I equals a S. Is it difficult? So basically it's just rearranging this particular equation. So Y equals C plus I plus G. I move C and G, I move C and G, to the left hand side. And I'm saying that this Y minus C minus G is equal to what? National savings. Y minus C minus G is equal to what? National savings. We can get both private savings and public savings from it. Public savings is just the excess of tax revenues over what government expenditure. But if you don't even understand all those things, all you need to know is that Y minus C minus G can be equated to what? It can be equated to national savings. Just a minute. Priscilla? Priscilla, you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Say. Yes.
Prisla. Omit yourself, omit yourself and as say yes. So please from the beginning of Marco Econ's class, mm -hmm. we know that the I stands for the national investment and mm -hmm. national savings has the capital S. So why are we using I here to denote national savings? Come again savings? with your question. You said I is what? National investment. Mm -hmm. or, yes. And we denote the national savings mm -hmm. with a capital S. Mm -hmm. So why are we... Or the denotations oh, differ. It's the same thing. It does not change. Okay. The D there is just for domestic savings. That's all. Or desired, desired investment, desired consumption. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Notations you. are they are always the same. They don't change. But, but I hope you understood how we were able to equate investment equal savings. Yes. Sir. Yeah. yeah. So desired investments, desired consumption. All right. So, so this is not even the yeah. most difficult part. The most difficult part is when we go forward a little bit, all right? So, um, okay. So Rebecca typed something. I'm trying to understand what she typed, but I don't really understand. Oh, she's asking if much has been said. Oh, we've just started, okay, Rebecca. So don't worry. Okay. So, so now, um, 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 I didn't, I can't remember t teaching you about this theory of consumption. Yes, this is You can unmute yourself and ask the question. Yeah, please, can we go back to the last slide? You said you add taxes and subtract taxes. Mm -hmm. but just to show, just to show the component of um, 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 public, public savings. You know, this yeah, okay. yes. So what you expect? There'll be minus taxes left because the positive one will no 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 there will not be minus taxes to, to enter this Y and to come as disposable income. So the disposable income will be um, so income the disposable minus income less, less consumption will give me the private savings. Yes. And then the T less G will give me national and public savings. So there's yes. private savings and public savings. The two gives me what national savings. Yes, so where is the other minus T? That is what has entered the Y to give me disposable income. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Okay, so 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 we can reduce this um, y equals a d equation into this i equals s, and 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 it makes things pretty much easy for us. Okay, now now let's move on. Um, we knew a little bit about savings. We said that um, if interest rates are high, then you, the, you are more likely to save now, and so more or less you are postponing current consumption. All right, you are postponing current consumption so that you can do what you can save a little bit more. All right, so so from consumption theory, I mean there is this theory on consumption. I know we've not gone into details, but what we really need from that particular consumption theory is that consumption should be negatively related to real interest rates and positively related to disposable income. Post the positive relationship with disposable income, we've seen that already from the consumption function. Okay. But the negative relationship with the real interest rate, we've not seen it. But the reason why when interest rate goes up, you consume less simply is based on the fact that income is either consumed or done what or saved. You either consume or save. So if interest rates are going up, you, the, the incentive to save more is there. And if you are saving more, then you're doing what? You're consuming less. So an, an increase in real interest rate increases the opportunity the opportunity to to, um, to postpone current consumption, okay? As interest rate it goes up, you postpone current consumption. So consumption, there's a negative relationship between interest rates and what? And consumption, all right? Negative relationship. 
yes, yes. Um, national savings is equal to total aggregate savings. That's correct. All right. Okay. So, so I hope you've understood this relationship between because it's going to help us. This relationship between consumption and real interest rate. Okay, it's going to help us as as we go forward. Okay. All right. So, so, so whenever there is an increase in your income, you, you save more. When there's an increase in your interest rate, you also do what you save more. All right. So recall also that the desired investment is negatively related to real interest rate. Yes. Okay. If interest rate goes up, the cost of the cost of doing business also does what goes up. The opportunity cost of capital is high. So you do what you wait and invest later. All right. So an increase in the real in so there's in, in in, in effect, what we are saying is that there's a negative relationship between interest rates and investment. There's a negative relationship between interest rate and investment. There's a negative relationship between consumption and interest rate, but there's a positive relationship between what savings and what interest rates. All right, in effect, that is what we are trying to say. Okay, all right. So now, now let's, let's move on to how we derive the IS curve. Okay, so yes, you too. You can unmute yourself and ask. Okay, sir. Yeah. And sir, please, uh, with the consumption that is, I mean, negative, inversely relating to the real interest rate, why is yeah. it not negatively related to the nominal interest rate, but real interest rate? We will come there later on. All right. But mostly in economics, when we are steady, we are talking about our issues, we use real values, not nominal values. Okay. And we'll come there when we are dealing with inflation, you tend to understand why that is important. All right. Inflation can really change the picture. And all of a sudden, when you're relying on nominal values, the picture tends to be quite deceiving. All right. So that was preferred to use the real interest rate. Okay. All right, so now let's come to deriving this so-called IIS curve. So in effect, what we are saying is this. We can decide to rely on Y equals AD to derive a particular point, okay? A particular equilibrium point. I don't want to refer to the IIS curve yet. And we, so we, instead of relying on Y equals AD to find an equilibrium income, we can also use what I equals savings to get that same equilibrium income, right? Is that clear? Let me hear from you guys. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Yes, sir. Yes, right. please. Yes, okay. So now, now let's go. Let's go here. Yeah, let's go here. All right. Sir, please so, go. Okay. Who, who is the one speaking now? Matilda. Yeah, Matilda. What do you want me to go over? Yeah, please go over. What Which one? you just said? Okay. What I'm saying is that. I can rely on Y equals AD to get equilibrium income. That's, is, is that correct? Matilda? Yes, sir. I can equate Y equals to AD and I can solve for equilibrium income. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm, now what I'm saying is that instead of doing Y equals AD to get a particular equilibrium income, I can rely on I equals S to get that same equilibrium income. Is that so? Yes, please. Good. So we have this negative relationship that we said. So this is the desired investment. It is negatively related to what? Interest rate. Interest rate is what you see vertically here. And then the desired investment is negatively related. But we said um, savings itself will be what? Positively related. So assuming we are at point one, this particular point, let's call this point one. At this point, the desired investment is, is equal to what? The um, um, savings, okay? The desired investment is equal to savings. So it's, it is one unique point where equilibrium income can be solved. And that particular unique point is, it's, it, it identifies one particular point on the IS curve. Don't forget the IS curve. Every point, okay, so what I should have said earlier on is that every point on this IS curve, any point at all is a particular point where there is an equilibrium in the goods market, okay? It's a particular point of equilibrium in the goods market. So just like at this particular point, desired investment is equal to savings, but it identifies just one particular point 
on the IS curve. So as you mean, look at what has happened. Look at the green line. Here, there was an increase in, in income. And we know when income increases, people do what? Save a lot more. Okay, they save a lot more. But it comes with what? A certain reduction in interest rate. And it gives us another equilibrium point in the goods market. So that's how they derived the second point. All right, so any point on this IS curve denotes a certain equilibrium in the goods market where the desired investment is equal to what? Desired investment is equal to what? Savings. All right? So the movement from point this particular point here to this point has to do with the fact that there has been an increase in income, okay? And that increase in income was accompanied. So the increase in income is what you see Y1 to Y2, income has increased. But here, with the increase in income, savings has increased. So it has shifted to what? To the right. And it comes with what? We'll now, what we we'll spend a lot of time on is this transmission mechanism. What causes interest rates to do what? To drop. Okay, what causes interest rates to drop? We'll come to that later on. But you see that the interest rate has dropped from what? R1 to R2. And on the IS curve, there's this, this reduction in the interest rate. Is it clear? So, so any point at all, any point at all on the IS curve denotes an equilibrium where desired investment is equal to what? Is equal to savings. Desired investment is equal to savings. Sarah, so, uh, unmute, unmute and let's talk. All right, yes, I, I, I know I have to go over, okay? Okay, Rebecca also says I should go over. All right. So, so this is what I'm saying. All right. What I'm saying is that any point on the IS curve, any point on the IS curve is a point where invest, desired investment is equal to what? Is equal to savings. Any point on it at all. Any point on the IS curve. So, any point, wherever, whichever point you point to, any point, any place you point, it's a place that denotes an equilibrium between desired investment and what? And, and, and savings. So let's pick just one particular point. So let's come to the goods market. Let's come to this savings and investment function, all right? Where savings, this positive line, meets the desired investment in this particular point. And I'm saying that this point identifies one particular point on the IS curve. So let's denote, let's plot that, okay? Now, there is an increase in income. And already we know when there is an increase in income, people do what? Increase their what? Their savings, all right? It's coming from here. So you, you need to understand this place where savings increases with both real interest rate and income, all right? Savings increases with both real interest rate and income, all right? So what is happening here is that there's an increase in income and the, and the savings function has shifted to the right from SY1 to what? SY2. And I'm saying that any point where investment equals savings is a potential point on the IS curve. All right. So now let's move to our IS curve. We know what has happened. IS curve corresponds to this particular point where there is an increase in income from Y1 to Y2, and there is a re reduction in interest rate from what? R1 to R2. Okay, so any point on the I, so the IS curve typically is negatively sloped with interest rate. It is negatively sloped with interest rate. And any point on the IS curve is a point where desired investment is equal to what savings. Is it clear now, Sewa? Yes, is it clear now? Okay, good. Yes, Teresa, I'll meet, I'll meet and let's talk. I've managed to convince her. Sir, please. Did you say um, that interest and savings, they have a positive relation? Yes. So the IS, the, no. So savings increases with both real interest rate and income. All right. Okay. So which one, which one are you referring to? I'm confused somewhere. You said previously, you said um, interest and savings, they have positive relation. Yes. So, per, per, 
the diagram, <laughs> which one is the interest? Is the R is, is the R is the income? So, take your time. R is, let's say, is income. We were initially here, and I told you that here there was an increase in income. Okay. Do you understand? Yes, there was an increase in was this in income that shifted the savings function to the right. Do you understand up to that point? Yes, sir. Good. So now the increase in in in, in the increase in income is what has shifted the um, 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 savings function to the right. Maybe maybe hold on. Let's continue a little bit. Let's continue a little bit, and maybe you will understand. Okay. Fair. Right. So that is so it means you are not understanding this part. All right. What you are not understanding is here savings increases with both real interest rate and income. What that means is that if there's an in increase in income, recording savings, stopped. When there's an increase in the real interest rate, savings also increase. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Good. Now let's look at consumption. When there is an increase in income, you consume more, right? Yes, sir. When there is an increase in um, real interest rate, you consume more, you consume less. Consume less. Good. Yes, now I'm telling you also that there's a negative relationship between interest rate and investment. Okay. Okay. Yes. Sir. Good. So right now, let's come here. If there is an increase in income, you save more or you save less? You save more. Okay. So that is why the um, um, savings function has shifted to the right. Okay. Okay. And if we trace the new equilibrium, the new equilibrium comes with what an increase in income and a reduction in interest rate. Huh? Say, uh, exactly. Yes, sir. Good. Sir, sorry to cut in, but yes. the recording has stopped. Oh, um, I just wanted to prompt you. Okay, SNL, SN, can you? Okay, don't worry, I, I will deal with that part. Okay, the lady recording the thing has been logged out. Yeah. Okay, sir. Um, please, with, with the, um, the address that R is on, why is um, R1 on top Initially of Initially, we were here, and there was, was an one. increase in income, and the savings function shifted. So we, we came here. Don't look at the numbers, so. Okay. It's just to denote, it's, so don't is, look uh, at it in terms of how we come into the numbers. Initially, we were here, one. This two is new. Don't look at it like this is zero, so this should have been one and two. Okay? Uh -huh. Good. All right. This is what I want us to talk about. Maybe this should help you to understand more. So how changes in GDP affect the savings market? Don't forget that there's a negative relationship between income and interest rate. So here is it. Here is the There's an increase in income. People are saving more. Okay? There's an increase in income. People, there's a pressure on what? Savings. Ideally, what will happen in the... Um, um, if, if you are a bank and a lot more people Yes, who is speaking? Yeah. There is that. So if you are a bank and a lot of people uh, are, are bringing their money to save with you, what would you do? You are a bank and a lot of people are bringing their money simply because your interest rate is high. It's high enough. But you, you are getting too much money. Is what 
uh, incomes are high and people are saving too much. As a bank, what you do is you reduce your interest rates. Otherwise, you suffer in the future when you have to pay back the people. So that is what has happened to this thing, okay? When there was an increase in income and people were saving more, that is what put the pressure on the interest rate to reduce from what? R1 to R2, okay? That is what put the pressure on in interest rate to reduce from R1 to R2. So we saw an increase in income, an increase in savings, and a reduction in interest rate, all right? So it, it tells you that there is this negative relationship between interest rate and income when you go to the goods market. There's that negative relationship between interest rates and income when it goes to the goods market. And don't forget that every point on the IS curve, every point on it, it denotes a certain equilibrium between invest, desired investment and savings. That's what I'm saying. Is it clear now? All right. Okay. So, so let me just assume it's clear. Please, it has to be clear because this topic, if this yes. is the first time you are hearing it. Yes. yes. So, so it means the second diagram is the um, ISK. Is the ISK, yes. Okay, okay, I guess it's not. Okay, so that is the ISK. Teresa, is your hand still up? Yes, sir, please. Mm -hmm. So you are doing it with the income and savings, not the no, interest rates and then the savings. Don't forget that. Are you doing it? At that? every point here, every equilibrium point here, we can determine what the real interest rate is and what income is. Okay. So it means that on every point on the IS curve, it denotes an equilibrium where we can tell what the real, what the equilibrium interest rate is and what the equilibrium income is in the goods market. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So 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 the IS curve just shows what happens in the it shows the equilibrium in the goods market. And here we are seeing a negative relationship that exists between. So this is the IS curve, IS curve telling you that on every point on the IS curve, investment equals savings. Is that correct? Yes, um, Frederica? Frederica, somewhere you can meet and ask me. I'm slowing down here because from here we'll move fast. Sir, please, you said the real interest rate has a positive... Relation with savings. Good. Was a drop in the real interest rate. So as income increased and people were saving them more, there is that pressure on the interest rate to drop. And that was what Teresa explained, that if you are a bank and people are bringing a lot of money to you to do what? To do what? To save. In future, you have to pay, the, uh, pay more if your interest rate is still high. So to minimize that risk, what happens really is that as people are saving them more, there's a pressure on the interest rate to drop. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank Good. you. So that gives us that equilibrium in the goods market. So in the goods market, there's this negative relationship between investment and what and, and interest rates and then what income. Good. Now, so, so basically if I ask you what will let me move from one point of the IS curve to the other point of the IS curve, what will your answer be? What will let me move from this to answer the question properly? When there is an increase in income. Increase. Increase in income, okay? So the only thing that will cause you to move along this curve, either up or down, is an increase in income. What will cause the curve to bodily shift either to the right or to the left? That's the next thing we will do, okay? That's the next thing we will do. All right, okay. I, ho I hope you can see it clearly because I've seen it as one of the past questions. That's why I've, I've deliberately asked you people. Me too, I'm, I'm looking through the past questions to make sure we are all on the same page, okay? I hope you understand. Yes. yes. Good. Good. 
right. So now let's look at um, the ISK to shift. Okay, ISK shift test. Okay, that's what we are looking at. So any other, so anything other than a change in income that changes the, the, the savings and investment market equilibrium will shift. Who's uh, on? Bridget. Um, sir, please, can you please go over again? I just okay. joined. Hey, if you just joined there, you worry me. Which one should I, I go? I was telling you the report to join. All right. Okay. So let me just summarize this for you. So what we've done basically is to derive this thing called an IS curve. So the IS curve just shows equilibrium in the goods market. And we are saying that every point on the IS curve denotes a point where investment is a bad investment is equal to what? So are you all right? Desired investment is equal to what savings. So now we are saying that movement along the IS curve can be denoted. It will happen. You can only move along the curve with a change in what in income. All right, with a change in income. Any other thing that will um, 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 change in the aggregate demand equation will shift the curve. Okay, bodily shift. Bodily shifts. When we say bodily shift, then this thing is shifting to the right like that or to the right like that, or to the left. That is bodily shifts, okay? Whenever we talk of bodily shifts, the curve moving to the right or moving to the left, okay? All right. Now, the question is, what are the factors that can cause the curve to shift either to the right or to the left, okay? And then the question, the answer is very simple. Oh, okay, so, all, all those um, 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 uh, autonomous things in the AD function can shift it. But but for now, let's focus just on the conduct of um, um, fiscal policy. You know, monetary policy does not come in here at all because we are not talking about the money market. What we are talking about is what is the goods market. Okay, what we are talking about is the goods, is the goods market. Okay, so here we are saying that what will be the effect of an expansionary fiscal policy on the IS curve? So it's as simple as that. Don't forget, expansion, uh, fiscal policy, you are looking at both is government spending, how government spends its money, and how it does what generates its money. Whenever there is an expansionary fiscal policy, there should be an increase in G and a reduction in what T. There should be an increase in G and a reduction in what in T. Anytime there's an increase in G. Okay, so, so we save, um, government makes a savings if it spends less and its tax revenue is high. So whenever there's an increase in G, there's a decrease in what? National savings. Whenever there's an increase in G, there's a decrease in national savings. Okay, all right. So now equilibrium interest rate rises. So whenever there is an increase in G, Okay, maybe the curve. All right. So whenever there is an increase in G, okay, we are saying that whenever there is an increase in G, there should be what a reduction in national savings. So the IS curve should do what shift to what. So the IS curve should shift to the left. So whenever the I M, um, not the IS curve, the savings curve. Whenever the savings curve decreases, it is shifting to the left. When it increases, it is shifting to what to the right. Okay, whenever the savings curve decreases, it's shifting to the left. When it's increasing, it is shifting to what? To the right. Yes, Frederica. Yeah, by, um, say, you said when government spending increases, national savings decreases. So na national savings is just taxes minus government spending. Okay. Taxes are the real... But the news that the government generates, okay? Okay, and so, so public savings is the same as national savings? So, no. So national savings equals both private savings and public savings. But we, if we, we can assume private savings to be constant here because whenever we are undertaking fiscal policy, what we touch is government spending and what tax revenue. 
Yes, okay. please. Thank Good. you. All right. So because we are and I take fiscal policy, that's why you are focusing so much on what public savings. And we are calling it national savings because we are holding constant private savings. All right. So now whenever when government spending is just equals to it tax, so the country is making any savings. But when the taxes are greater than government spending, then there there is a positive national savings. Whenever G is also bigger than T, then you're not making, the, there's a national disaving, all right? So here we are looking at a situation where there's an increase in G, okay? We are saying that whenever there's an increase in G, savings reduces, national savings reduces, and that's pretty clear, all right? And that is what we see on the next curve, okay? That is what we see on the next curve, the um, um, savings function shifting to the left. Okay, savings function, savings to the left. If we were to hold on to the same level of income, we realize that there's a bodily shift up. Okay, there's a bodily shift of the IS to the right. It moves up. Okay, it moves up. So here, what we are saying is this. If there is an expansion fiscal policy, the IS curve shifts towards the right. Whenever there is a contractionary fiscal policy, the IS curve shifts towards the left. Is it clear? I, I've just decided to slow down here because as for this topic, it's not difficult, but you can get the um, um, transmission wrong. Okay, so that's why I've taken my time to slow things down here. Um, so please, um, the, the Y1 is just income one. So if we fix income at the same level, okay, so if income is held at the same level and government has its expansionary fiscal policy, what we see is that bodily shift of the IS curve. Okay? okay. Good. Do you understand? Please respond so that I'll know before I move on. So not really. <laughs> what do you don't you understand? <laughs> Okay, so 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 take it this way. Even if you don't even if you don't understand, take it this way. An expansion of the IS curve to the right. Contraction, okay, and the, the expansion behind it is very 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 soon. Expansion of fiscal policy, there's an increase in gene. Okay. Whenever there's an increase, do you understand the fact that an increase in G reduces national savings? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, somebody should explain to me why it reduces national savings. Recording in progress. Yes. Yeah, because um, taxes are government's and less revenue. So yes. when there's increase in government expenditure, we all know um, government savings is the taxes, then you less your government expenditure. So if yes. your expenditure is more than the taxes you are getting, then yes. automatically it will reduce the government Beautiful. savings. Beautiful. 10 marks for you. I'm, I'm writing your name in your index now. 10 marks for you. Okay. Rebecca. Do you want to ask a question? No, so, so, to oh, you made me miss the name of the person who just answered. <laughs> who just answered the question? Oh, okay. So the person should just get That's in touch. Martha. Martha. Okay. Good, Martha. So I'll keep the 10 marks for you, yeah? Okay. Right. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. So, so fiscal policy will shift the IS curve to the right. Okay. Now, when income increases, equilibrium interest rates in savings and market drops. Okay. An increase in income drops in the investment market, and that's the movement along the IS curve. Anything else? Okay. So apart from an expansionary fiscal policy, okay? Okay, so peaceful, I will ask you another question. And then if you're able to answer, I'll give you 10 marks, yeah? 
So anything, so expansionary fiscal policy shifts the ISCAP to the right. So Recording here stopped. An increase in government spending and a reduction in taxes. An increase in government spending and a reduction in taxes shifts the and the recording there are some in progress. Other, um, there are some other um, um, elements that when we incorporate them into the ISK, we can shift the ISK to the to the right. For instance, this I've spoken about already. When there's an increase in government expenditure, I shift the ISK to the right up. When so this one is stated in the reverse form. When there's an increase in tax revenues, national savings that's what increases. So it shifts the ISK to what to the left. Okay, and then when there is an increase in invest desired investments, ISK shifts to the right up. When there is an increase in desired consumption, ISK shifts. So all of these factors are things you need to know. All right, somebody sent me a long email. Okay, not an email, a, a, a message in the chat. So it kept me distracted for a while. Okay, let, let me just minimize this chat thing for a while and make sure. Yes, Prisla. Prisla, you can ask your question. Okay, she said um, higher government consumption or expenditure causes the ISK to shift up to your to your rights. Good. Say. Mm -hmm. Recording stopped. I don't understand, understand that, but isn't it supposed to shift to your, your okay. left? What is the effect of gene that is government expenditure on aggregate recording in progress? What is the effect of government expenditure on aggregate demand? Look at um, AD equation AD equals A plus I plus G. Whenever G goes up, what happens to the aggregate demand? It increases. So, anything, any of the elements that increases aggregate demand will shift the IS curve to the right. So look at um, tax this. Whenever there is an increase in tax, what happens to aggregate demand? Before, so it shifts the IS curve down. Whenever there is an increase in investment, what happens to aggregate demand? It shifts upwards. It increases, so it shifts upwards. Okay, so it's the same thing. Don't forget, I told you that when um, I equals S is the same as Y equals H. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. 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 Yeah. So any of the factors that shift the AD upwards will shift the IS curve up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's wow. like so when um, um, the government is in recording the case, stopped, that means um, the curve moves to the left, exactly. Okay, okay, with fixed income, there's a bodily shift in the IS curve. Okay, good. I urge you, I urge you to be looking at the past questions, okay, so that it makes your learning take shape. Okay, so I, I intentionally took my time, simply because of the type of questions I saw in the past question, all right? Because of the type of questions I saw in the past. And for your information, even before we go on, for your information, your IA is on the 30th of this October. Okay, it will be online 30th of this October. From I think from nine six to ten or there about. Stop, I, stop. I, I didn't get what you said. It's not the whole day. Recording in it's progress. Not the whole day. It's not the whole day. You have just about two or something hours to do the IA. Eh? Okay. So please, so, so so I have no excuse that I so didn't. So what is Sakai jump? So which means I can jump. Yeah. At the same time. It will jump. It will jump. But, it's 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 right. It's my jump. It's not 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 jump. It
we won't do it. So what we will do is this: we, 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 you, your, your eye is on on the thirtieth of October. Prepare very well. And make sure you do well. Okay. So that's why I've been worried about making sure that you go attend your tutorials and then also making sure that um, and I have an idea of what the past questions are. This one will be multiple choice. Recording okay. stopped. Okay, it will be multiple choice. So make sure make sure you're able to cover it, okay? So it will be, the areas is from wherever we started from to wherever we will end by the 30th of October, okay? So by 30th of October, I think we will have covered a couple of things, okay? All right, so now let's move on. We've done the goods market too. We are now moving to the money market. So the ISK describes the goods market, okay? It describes the goods market. Recording in progress. Okay, so now let's move on to this LM curve, okay? The LM curve, the money market equilibrium. All right, so it's the same thing we are going to do, okay? The same thing we are going to do, whatever we did in the uh, IS, um, the goods market by equating investment cost savings. We are going to do something similar in the money market, okay? We are going to do something similar in the money market, but we will show you this time around, we are going to equate the demand for money to the supply of money. We are going to equate the demand for money to the supply of money. All right, so now let's go. So an LM curve denotes equilibria in there. So you see equilibria, not equilibrium, equilibria in the money market saying that every point on the um, LM curve is a notable equilibrium point where the demand for money is equal to this. That's why it is written equilibria. Okay, so the IS curve two is an equilibria where investment- Recording stopped. For every single point on the IS curve. So, so LM curve shows various interest rate and income combinations that ensures equilibrium in the money market. Recall that the demand for money curve is a downward slope in liquidity preference. Okay, liquidity preference is what you are referring to as the demand for money. Recording in progress. And then um, for the money supply, don't forget last semester, we, we assume it to be fixed or determined by the central bank. So that one, it's a vertical line, okay? And money is the, when we are undertaking monetary policy, money is the, is the policy variable. That is the most important variable that is altered, all right? Now we already know that money is an asset and individuals, any rational individual. Yes, matter, the, the, the IS curve is almost sloped. So money demand, so we know that um, any rational individual who have a portfolio of financial assets, Okay, how to divide the financial assets into both money and we all know those stuff. Okay, we all know those stuff. Now let's come to, and then let's summarize this also. We already know what the transactions demand for money is. Okay, it, can, it depends positively on real income in that as income increases, you need more money for your transaction purposes. Okay, as income increases, you need more money for your transaction purposes. Okay. We also know Recording that stopped. if prices double, if prices double, okay, if you want to undertake the same transactions that you were undertaking previously, then you need to double up your money. If prices double, you need to double up your money. Now, there is this relationship that exists between the real interest rates and then the nominal interest rate. So the nominal interest rate is just the real interest rate plus inflation. This Fisher, this the Fisher equation. So more or less, if you want the real interest rate, it is the inflation, my M. It is the nominal interest rate less inflation. Okay. Okay. Now, recording the in cost progress. Of money, that if interest rate goes up, if interest rates go up, for any rational individual, it doesn't make sense for you to hold money. The most important thing is to save that money to take advantage of what the increase in. So, it, high interest rates means it's more costly to hold money. All of this stuff we know already. Okay. All of this stuff we know already. So now let's move on to um, um, defining the demand for money function. So we are defining the demand for money function. So MD is money demand function. It depends on what? 
prices and your liquidity preference. Your liquidity preference depends on who you holding money for income, you holding money for, um, you increasing your demand for money as your income increases. And then this is your nominal interest rate, the real interest rate plus inflation, okay? Real interest rate plus inflation. Now we can decide, so this one is nominal. What we can do is to define it in real terms. So in real terms, meaning that we are dividing this um, function by P so that, so MD over P is real money demand. We are saying that real money demand depends positively on the on, on income. So L just says your liquidity preference. So your real money demand depends positively on income and negatively on what? Interest rates, okay? This we know already, it's coming from last week's lecture, all right? So your liquidity preference, we know the demand for money is negatively slowed. High interest rates means high opportunity cost of doing what? Holding money. So as your interest rate, as interest rates goes up, the amount of money you hold on yourself reduces. Okay. And um, okay. And um, Monica, unmute, unmute and let's talk. Let me see. Okay, you can unmute. Yeah, please, can you explain the liquidity preference again? Oh, so it means you didn't come to class last week. Once you get it better. Hey, Once you understand it well. Okay. So, so, so it's just the demand for money, all right? Okay. So the demand for money, we are saying that the demand for money is a function of income and interest rate. That is all we are saying. And I'm saying that okay. this is defined in nominal terms. So MD is nominal demand for money. To get the real demand for money, I divide through the equation by what? P. Divide this place by P, this pair this place by P. So we say that the real demand for money is a function of what? Income and interest rate. We are not saying anything new. Last semester we spoke about, or and last week we, we described this. Okay, we describe this. So in, in, in effect, what we are saying is this, as income increases, you hold more money to, to for uh, your demand for money also increases. Recording stopped. All other purposes, whether for transactions or precautionary or speculative. But when interest rates are high, it doesn't make sense for you to hold a lot of money when you can earn interest on the money you are holding. So there's a positive relationship between income and the real demand for money and a negative relationship between interest rate and then a real demand for money. Is that clear? So, so, so in effect, what if we put the two together, then we have this negative relationship that exists between um, 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 that this negative relationship between interest rates and the recording real recording in money. progress. It's a negative relationship between interest rate and real Good. money demand. Okay. Good. So now let's move on a little bit. Let's go to the supply of money. The supply of money, we said, is the nominal quantity of money that is supplied, and it is controlled by the so-called central bank. We know how they can use various instruments, including the open market operations, the discount rates, the prime rate, all of those stuff to influence the, um, the, the supply of money. We already know that. And because we are assuming it is vertical, and um, money supply is controlled solely by the central bank, we assume it is vertical. So the supply of money is vertical, whilst the demand for money is what? Negatively sloped. This is the demand for money. It is negatively sloped. And then this is the supply of money. So we have the supply of money here, and then what? The demand for money here. At equilibrium, what we determine is interest rates. Okay, we determine a certain interest rate and a certain real money demand or supply. So real money, okay. So at equilibrium, where money supply equals to the liquidity preference, the demand for money, real money demand, we can determine this so-called what equilibrium real interest rate. So don't forget, in the IS, in the goods market, we created investment to savings to get a particular point on the IS curve. Here, what we are doing is that we are equating the demand for money, the real demand for money to the real supply of money to determine one particular point. Okay, to determine one particular point on the LM curve. Now, if there is, don't forget here, the most important 
and shift its money. So if um, there is an increase, okay, so if there is an increase in income, the real demand for money increases and interest rate does what? Goes up. Okay, there is an increase. So if there is an increase in income, real money demand increases and there is an increase in what? Interest rate. So, so in the goods market, whenever there was, in the goods market, an increase in income was met by what? A reduction in what? The interest rate. Here, an increase in income is met by what? An increase in real interest rate, simply because you are in the money market. And your portfolio, the portfolio of an individual co consists of both money and financial assets. So if there's an increase in income, there's that pressure to invest that particular money in a particular financial asset. And that is what leads to that pressure of the interest rates going up. Okay, that is what leads to the pressure of interest rates going up. All right, so unlike the goods market where there is a negative relationship between interest rate and income. In the money market, there's a positive relationship between interest rate and income. Okay, there's a positive, and I've, I've allowed you to unmute. So if you have any questions, please let's shoot, all right? So in the money market, there's a positive relationship between the real interest rate and real money balance. There's a positive relationship between the real interest rate and the real money balance. Okay, so let me assume. Recording we are stopped. Fine here. Okay, so the LM curve shows the equilibrium real interest rates in the real money market for different levels of GDP income. All right, G different levels of income. All right, and then the equation for so yeah, what we have here is the, on, the, on the left hand side is your real money supply being equals to what your money demand. Okay. It slows up because an increase in income increases real money. Recording balance, in progress. Then it requires a higher interest rate to restore equilibrium. Okay, it requires a higher interest rate. So R on the vertical axis, Y on the income. So we have a positive L curve. Okay. Um, okay. Now. Okay. So so. Here, the, the, there's some intuition behind the explanation. And the intuition behind the explanation is that when you hold money for maybe transaction purpose, the rate of return is zero. But when you hold it for other financial assets, the non-money, in terms of non-money, it, it attracts a certain interest rate. And that is what pushes the interest rate up whenever there is um, an increase in analogy. Nanalate, you can unmute and ask. Nanalate. Yes, Nana. Okay. Uh, are you not able to unmute? Please stay on the line or call me on the phone. No, no, no. I'm 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 back. I, I was just off briefly. I hope you can hear me. All right. So now, um, why demand money? Okay, so how changes in GDP affects? So we saw how an increase in income, you demand money for transactional purposes. So your real money balance goes up, and interest rate goes up. So there's this positive relationship between income. Can you hear me? Income and interest rate. And that is the whole intuition behind what happens in the, in the, in the, in, in the money market. And that derives the LM curve for us. So the LM curve shows that positive relationship between interest rates and income. So any other thing than a change in income changes the money market equilibrium. Okay, any other thing- Recording than, stopped. Any other thing than a change in income causes, all right. So here we have an, an example where there's an increase in money supply. Recording so, so in progress. And um, in the case of the, um, 
um, the uh, IS scale, the IS market, expansionary fiscal policy shifts the IS scale to the right. Here we have a situation where expansionary monetary policy shifts the M LM curve to the right. Expansionary, it shifts the There is a uh, okay. So, so expansionary fiscal policy shifts the IS curve to the right. Oh. Oh, please mute, unmute. You can unmute yourself. Can you? Yes, there is a. Say, say, say. Yes. Please, can you go back to the last slide? Yes. That is the second one. It says, um, when Y increases more T to ration. Yes, what is that? No, no, why are you people interested in those things? It is transactions. So an increase in income, you need more money for your transactions. Okay. And, and then sir, your, please, your can you take, please, can you slow down a little because I'm not getting it. It's just a typo. No, no, no not that one, like the next one. When you move on to the next one, please, can you, can you go over and then slow down okay. because I'm not getting it. Is it this one or the previous one? Yes, slide? please. Yes, this no, one. this one, yes, please. Okay. So here, okay. consider the blue the blue dot here. The blue dot here shows you one point where the demand for money is equal to the supply of money. And we said that will identify one particular point on the LM curve. Is that correct? Okay. And that will identify one particular point on the LM curve. Now we are saying that movement along the curve can only be attained by a change in income, by bodily shifts in the LM curve can come from, for instance, an increase in money supply. So initially we were here, there was an increase in money supply. The, the, the MS, the money supply vertical curve shifts to the right, and that's the red line. We are saying that with income held at the same level, what we will see is an increase in the, um, is the shift, is the body shift of the LM curve to the right. So an increase in money supply they shift from this blue dot to the red dot, blue dot to the red dot. If income is held constant, is denoted by what? A reduction in the real interest rate. And we can see it from here. So we are just translating this information here, here, saying that whenever there is an increase in money supply, the LM curve shifts to the right. And whenever there is a decrease in money supply, the LM curve shifts to the left. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Good. Yes, so, in effect, what we are saying is just trying to summarize. Um, okay. So, an increase in money supply leads to a decrease in the real interest rates. This, this we've seen already. All right. So, for a given income, money supply that's what increases interest rate drops. All right. Okay. So, the LM shifts down to the right. Okay. So, now let's come here. When income increases, interest rate increases in the money market, that describes the LM curve, okay? And that describes the LM curve. Anything else shifts the LM curve. So higher money supply. So that's why I was saying that an expansionary monetary policy shifts the, an expansionary monetary policy shifts the LM curve to the right. Contractionary shifts it to the left. Look at higher prices. prices, LM shifts. Okay, so higher money supply, LM shifts to the right. Lower money supply, LM shifts to, what? to the left. If prices increases, what happens to real money, to the real money balance? Look at real money balance. Let's go back. So real money balance is just over P. 
Okay, so an increase in, let me try. Oh, I think I've gone too much. Okay, so this is what I wanted. So what happens, this is the nominal money balance, okay? The real, nom uh, the real money balance is just the nominal divided by what? By P. Okay, so Priscilla, I'll answer your question, okay? Um, so, so whenever there's an increase, in real money balance reduces. And we already know what the, the effect of a reduction on money supply is on the LM curve. So if prices go up and real money balances drop, we should expect the LM curve to shift to the left. Okay, to shift up. Okay, so that's, that's all this slide was trying to um, explain. Yeah, so this is all this slide is trying to explain. Higher money supply, LM shifts. So it tells you one way money supply can increase is when prices reduce. So a reduction in prices means money supply will do what? Real money listing will go up. Real money balance will go up. And LM shifts will shift up. Okay. I don't know if it's clear for you. So, 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 so in effect, an expansionary monetary policy will shift LM curve to the right. The contractionary will shift it to what? To the left. So the same thing can happen. When there's a higher price level, LM shifts up. Whenever there's a financial turmoil, that increases the demand for money. Okay, so, so, so what you should be looking at is for each of the factors, how does each of the factors shift um, either this curve, apart from income, how does any of the factors that we'll mention shift either the demand for money or the supply of money? A supply of money can only, shift, can only be shifted by what? The central bank. Any other factors that you can think about. So for instance, inflation, it can only affect the demand for money. Um, 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 so so that, that's the example that is being mentioned here, all right? So if we come here, when there's a financial turmoil, okay, when there's a financial turmoil, people have less confidence in the banks, so they hold a lot of money on them, okay? So there's an increase in the demand for liquidity, LM shifts up. Higher expected inflation. When we expect inflation to increase in the future, People demand for um, higher expected inflation decreases the demand for, okay, so there's a typo here. So, so when you expect inflation, there's a typo there, all right? When you expect inflation to increase in higher expected inflation decreases the demand for liquidity, okay? So it should have been this. Higher expected inflation decreases the demand for liquidity. Okay, and LM shifts downwards. Okay, if you expect inflation to increase in the future, okay, what you do is to hold your money now to buy everything. So, so that way you hold on and hold a lot of money. When inflation is up, you decide to do what? Hold a lot of money on you so that you can use it to do your transactions. And then LM shifts down. Okay, and and over there. Please, can you go over the correction of the typo again? I didn't get that side. I'll, I'll look at it again, but I think it should be higher expected inflation decreases the demand for liquidity. So this part, this part shouldn't be there. Higher expected inflation decreases demand for liquidity. So LM shifts down. Okay. I'll, I'll take a more careful look at it, but I think this part shouldn't be there. Okay. Thank you. Good. So, so we are almost about wrapping up. Okay. Consider the effect of monetary tightening. Okay. Example: Consider the increase in the monetary policy rate from twenty six percent to from twenty five percent to twenty twenty six percent in November twenty fifteen. The increase in the policy rate decreases. It represents a decrease in money supply. Don't forget. We said that one way, so under the open market operations that we discussed last week, an increase in the policy rate, meaning we are reducing what money supply. So given that, given the price level, real money supply does what? 
falls and shifts the curve to the left in the money in the money market. Okay, it should be in the money market. There are one or two types of the, in the money recording market. So LM curve definitely, the LM curve will definitely shift to the left. Okay, so so that's what I was saying. That expansionary monetary policy will shift the recording in progress. Right. Contractionary will shift it to the left. Okay, so the LM curve shifts up to the left. Okay, so equilibrium income increases and real interest rate falls. All right. So this is the type of. So this this is what has happened. We were initially here. There was an increase in the policy rate to reduce the supply of money in the in the in the market. Increase in the policy rate to reduce the supply of money. LM curve has shifted to the, to the left. All right. So, so this is the type of um, analysis we will expect you to do. Okay, we will expect you to do in the exams. It will come straightforward like that. That um, a contractionary uh, monetary policy what to be the effect on the LM curve. It won't come straight like that. We'll give you, for instance, that um, policy rate has been increased. Okay, so so Rebecca, yes, yes, that's what I'm saying. Okay, so so so, so this is the type of questions you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing in your exams, in your main exams. It will come straight like recording stopped. Okay, so it will come straight like increase in money supply. It will come in the form of supply. A monetary policy, um, a monetary policy has been um, 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 announced. And it is a reduction in interest rate. What will be the effect on the LM curve? All right. So these are the things you need to take carefully. Roboda, is it the new hand you have raised or is the old hand? Sorry, it was the old one. Okay, all right. So so um basically that's it. That's it for today. I mean it's just ISLM. I, I try to take my time to go through it because especially for those that have not um, 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 done it before, it can be tricky. So, so just take your time. Let, let me allow you to take your time. Yeah, let me allow you to take your time and go through. It's not difficult. Also, Henry, also, it is not difficult at all. It is just, you shouldn't be confused. You should, you should, it's not difficult. You just need to take your time and read through it. Okay, it's not difficult at all. Just that for some of you, maybe maybe new. So so L stands for liquidity preference. M stands for money supply. Okay, investment equals savings. Investment equals savings. Demand for money is the same as what liquidity preference. And M is standing for what money supply. Okay, yes, Akia, Jude, Jude, you can unmute. Okay, Mr. P, um, did you see um, a reduction in the um, money supply or the money rate? I didn't read it. Come again, your line is faint. You asked, you asked, uh, the question will be framed, and it will be framed in a different way, in a consistent way. And you are giving an example. And you example. An example. Mention it. Yeah. What, mention what I said. Myself, you said, I said, uh, he said, um, what would be the effect on the LM curve if um, there's a, a reduction of the, the money, then the money supply? Okay, money what I was referring to was this, and I hope I'm correct. I'm saying okay. that when it is direct, like what is the effect of an expansionary monetary policy on the LM curve? It's simple. It's very, very simple to shift to the right. Every time there's an expansionary monetary policy, LM curve shifts to the right. Contractionary monetary policy, it shifts to the left. And I'm saying that in the exams, it will not come as simple like that. Like that. What will come will be a certain monetary policy, for instance. Recording in progress. A reduction in the policy rate. What will be the effect of the reduction on the policy rate on equilibrium on the LM curve? All right. So, so we already know what the effects are, okay? And there's, there's this example here. This example here should guide you, okay? Yeah, increase in policy rate. You should know that whenever there's an increase in the policy rate, the idea is to reduce the supply of money. And whenever there's a reduction in the policy rate, the idea is to do what? Increase the supply of money. And we already know what will happen to the LM curve if there's an increase or a decrease in money supply. So I'm saying that 
it won't come direct for you to just look at it and just answer it and go. It could be indirect. So you have Recording to take your time stopped. and understand it as a mechanism. Okay, please. Thank you very much. Okay, so peaceful. I'm not saying that the exam will be difficult. It will not be difficult. It will be just about you taking your time to go through the analysis. It won't come directly like what is an increase in money supply on LMK. That one is too simple. But we'll use policy, monetary policy or fiscal policy. Okay, so, so it won't be difficult. Don't worry, it's not going to be difficult. But you need to know that when, okay, so for instance, when treasury bills are sold to the public, is it supposed to increase money supply or reduce money supply? Reduce. Recording in progress. And if it reduces money supply, what will happen to the LMK? It will shift to the left. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying, that it is not going to be difficult, okay? It's not, Bridget, it's, the, it's not going to be difficult. It's not that at all. It's all, all about you taking taking your time, taking your time and analyzing the questions carefully. You definitely get it right, okay? Hey, Abigail, you cannot come to the exams without looking through the nose, so otherwise you fail. Okay, you cannot come to the exams, Abigail, you cannot come to the exam saying you have not looked through the notes. You have to look through the notes. I mean, you shouldn't rely on just what we have said in the lectures. I mean, if you, if you fail, you even forget some of the things we said. Okay. Yeah, well, you see the slides are even... The slides are what? They are not enough. Yes, so that's why there's a course outline. And on the course outline, we specified the main test book for you, okay? Let, let me see if I can share the course outline for you to see. So please, please, it's not difficult. It's just about you taking your time, sitting down, and, and going, through, going, through, going through the notes, okay? So the main test book is... Um, Recording stopped. Abel, Benanke, and so in a basic Mantu and Taylor Two is a very in a basic macroeconomics book. When you pick it, it should be able to help you. You can use Mantu and Taylor. It's not very difficult to understand. Recording in progress. Right. And nowadays, to some of these things, they are too easy to miss. And just go online, YouTube, the times you have been using to watch all those videos. Just go there and ask somebody to explain to you. Just type ISLM equation in YouTube. You will see a lot of explanations. Yeah? Lowell, I, I jump on. Um, sir, please, can you kindly share the test book with us? Because I don't have I don't have a soft copy of the test book. So you check, you check from um, um, maybe the library or so. I'm sure the main library should have it. I don't have a soft copy. Otherwise, I'll share. Otherwise, I'll look for, I'll try and see if I can get a soft copy and share it with you. And for those of you asking for the past question, I'm, I'm not sure where, um, I'm sure if you go to the business school, you'll get it. Okay. Okay. Sorry, yeah. please, one more, one more thing. Yeah. Yes, please. Um, where, for, for the purpose of the I, where are we supposed to learn up to for the purpose of the I? Yeah, you are supposed to do um, everything we will do up to the point of the 30th. Okay. Okay, sir. I get mm -hmm. it now. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah Adley, Adley says he has a soft copy of the book. So, Adley, please share, send me an email and give me a copy of the, of the book, all right? I don't I have a hard copy, I don't have a soft copy. So Adley, it'd be good for you to um, 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 let me see if I can send you my email address so that you send me. Okay, so Adley, I've sent you my email address. Just send me an email and then give me a soft copy of the book. All right. And it will be shared on your WhatsApp platform too. So take your time. Okay. So so let's end here. And um, what I will do is I will allow you. I will allow you to go through the notes. We'll meet on Thursday, first 10 minutes. I'll try and use it to go through it once more.
Okay, I will write, I will try and go through the notes once more. And then, um, and then, and then, and then I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm, I'm sure you'll be fine. Just take your time. All right. One thing I realized in the main exams is that most of you didn't take your time. You were just answering the questions just like that. Take your time. Go slow. Understand the question you're answering. And you realize that you don't have to write half a page. Some of the questions, and some of the questions, you just need some two or three sentences. And that's all. You see people writing half a page. Okay. It's because you don't understand. So you're just beating around the bush. Take your time, understand the question. If you understand the question, you realize that the answer, the real answer is always very short. Okay, very, very short, straight to the point. Okay, so I can see SNA is saying she, she will share the um, recording with you. All right, so go through it. Always feel free to send us an email. I do get a lot of emails. I try to reply to as many as I can. Some of your colleagues do send me emails. All right, so do send me an email if you don't understand anything and, and then I'll, I'll go through it with you mm. all right okay see yes more time please i want to confirm something with the money market you said that when um, there's an increase in income yeah, sir, I was your, woman, sir, interest, <laughs> your interest your interest rate will increase but the money supply will decrease exactly um, okay yeah Okay. All right. So, so, so I think that should be it, guys. Let's let Adelaide. Have you, uh, Adelaide, have you received that? Sir, please, what about the IA? Yeah, I said it would be on the 30th of October. Um, okay. Let's see. I'll edit. Sir, what about the first question? So, please mute your mic. Come again. I said that. All right. Okay. So, so you get a first question from your business, the business school. I mean, just go there. Ask your colleagues. They know how to get it. Uh, so you can even access them on, uh, on BAM Library. Oh, they are first question from BAM Library. Hey. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Sir. Wow. Yes. Um, please, I wanted to inform Adelaide that I've sent her um, a private message. You should attend to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually in group one, so we also need a textbook. So I needed to send it to my colleagues as well. Okay. All right. So Adelaide, please, I've sent you my number in the direct message. All right. All right. Okay. You guys hey, boys. enjoy hey, your day. Boys. Hey boys. Bye. <laughs> bye bye. Hey boys. Recording.
Il est beau, il est pas 